What's up guys, it's Anthony from AB Fitness Center here and today we have an awesome client interview today, a, a wonderful transformation story. Um, I gotta say, transformation of the year has got to go to Noel. I mean, she is phenomenal, she's our rock star. She's down 52 pounds, 12% body fat, and 15 inches off the waist. So without further ado, I'm bringing on Noel. So Noel. Round of applause for you. Say hi to all the virtual people watching this right now. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Anthony knows this always makes me nervous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to make her extra nervous and we're going to put her on the spot with all these questions. But like I told her, it was just me and her having a conversation. So in the while, I'm super excited to bring you on. Um, I wanted to bring you on a lot sooner, but you had a lot of hiccups. You know, a lot of things happened to you in the past couple of weeks. And we'll get into that. But um. So just give everybody a rundown. Tell everybody your story, where you came from, how it feels to be 52 pounds down. I mean, let's hear it. I, I can't wait to hear it. I'm excited to hear the before and the now. Um, so I've told this story a thousand times now, but like most many, many, many women, I just have always struggled with my weight. I've tried every diet, every fitness, every fad, every diet pill. Um, you name it, to try and lose weight, get in shape. Nothing ever seemed to work, or even if it did, it never lasted. Um, fast forward to having kids and getting older, it just kept progressing to putting on more and more weight and spending half the time thinking, oh, I got to do something about this to forget it. I'm just destined to be an overweight housewife, mommy, working woman, don't have time for any of this stuff. Um, so that's pretty much my story where I started. Where it got a little tricky is as I got older, it was getting more and more uncomfortable and I was feeling more sluggish. I, I couldn't, it just, nothing felt good. My back hurt, my knees hurt, everything was bothering me. Um, and you get to a certain age, you start having different tests done. And, um, you know, I went to endocrinologist and my thyroid was sluggish. My metabolism was sluggish, not to the point where needing medicine. It was just always the same story. Try this diet work out more, work out less, do this. Um, and it still didn't work. Um, then I went to another doctor and had to have um, some tests done. And lo and behold, they told me I had osteopenia, which scared me. I didn't even know what that was, but it's the start of, start of osteoporosis. And um, the first thing they said to me was, you have to start weight training and lose weight. So I, I didn't even know where to begin with that. Weight training just scared me right off the bat. I, I never even would think about lifting weights. I did aerobics, I did anything like that, but lifting weights was not something I was comfortable with. Um, but I was really scared and just so happened that every day I drive home from work and this new gym opened on my street right down the road and I kept seeing it and being scared enough, I said, I think I should just walk in those doors and at least say I made an effort to do something about this not thinking it would ever work or I'd even end up doing it for long term. So that was my starting point. Um, I don't know where to go from here. So I walked in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So I walked in the doors and immediately was greeted with Anthony's big smile. And of course I looked at all the weights and wanted to cry because I was like, I don't belong in this place at all. Um, but I sat down with you and you explained how your program works and why it's different and all of that stuff and made me feel comfortable enough that I was willing to try it. Still not thinking it would do anything. I was going to tell everybody our running, our running joke. <laughs> we do have a running joke. <laughs> yeah. So me and Noel have a running joke. I'll let, I'll let her tell it because it's funnier when you tell it. Okay. So so I left thinking, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to try it, but I'm sure I'm going to come back in a couple of weeks and say, you know, I gave it a shot, but like everything else, it's not going to work. And I can just go, woe is me and on my way and figure out the next thing I'm going to try. Um, but I kind of had an epiphany one night, like a week into it. And I said to myself, you know what, if I really want to say I gave this a try, I have to 100% do everything that I was told to do which it was the first time I realized I never really did everything a hundred percent. So I said, now I'm going to do everything Anthony says and, and it still won't work, but I can at least say I totally a hundred percent did everything by the book. And there you go. I started <laughs> doing that and it worked. <laughs> and yeah, I told uh, Anthony, 
I'll never forget when you came to me and you're like, you know, my goal was to prove you wrong. And I've lost every time. Every it's just, single time. It's hysterical. It's such a good thing. And, and you know what? It's so relatable, your story. And this is why I was just so excited to get you on because I'm sure a ton of people feel the same way that you felt. Like, oh, this is just not going to work for me. What else do I have to do? I'm intimidated by the weights. I mean, it's normal. It's totally normal. I hear it all the time. And this is why I love, I think that your story is, again, so unique because it's just like you overcame it all. So, all right. So now you, you decide, you get started here. You say, okay, I'm going to, if I got to prove this guy wrong, I'm going to listen to everything. So what happens next? How was the first week? The first week, um, was brutal. It was really brutal. I, I went to my first workout and I, I couldn't even, first of all, I was so scared. I was a nervous, nervous. I was so afraid, but started the workout and I was totally made comfortable. I mean, Pete and Laura are the best. They never, they just, you guys just make everyone feel like you belong there and you can do it. And it's just, it's, it's amazing. Um, I did the workout. I, it was so hard. I mean, my heart was racing. Everything was hurting. I, I walked out the door and I didn't think I could even walk home. And I lived two blocks away. <laughs> I, I you know, it was like, it was really painful. And that weekend was super painful. I mean, walking upstairs, trying to sit down, anything. I just, I never hurt so much, but I kind of enjoyed the workout. So I was like, all right, I'm going to give it a try again and again and again and again. And it kept getting a little easier and a little better. And it was amazing how fast like you improve on everything. Yeah. So, I mean, and fast forward again, and Noel, like you mentioned, when you first came in, you're, uh, I'm always afraid to lift weights. I was intimidated by everything. I mean, right before this quarantine ended, you did like 185 pounds on the deadlift for reps. Like, did you, if I would have told you when you first sat down and said, Hey, look, you're going to lift 185 pounds multiple times. What would you have told me? No, I would have said no way. <laughs> no, that's not something girls do. <laughs> <laughs> Super you know. women do that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, you're in that category now. Yeah. And I love, and I love it, which is the crazy part. Like I really love doing it. I, I never, ever would have expected that. So that's amazing. It's very empowering. It's very, um, and it's so efficient. I mean, really, when you're a busy person, it's the most efficient workout I've ever seen. Yeah. yeah I always sure. tell people that. I'm like, I am in and out of the door in 30. It takes me two minutes to walk to you. So 34 minutes all totaled, I could be done. And, uh, and I've gotten the most amazing workout ever. Yeah. And 52 pounds later, you know, here you are yeah. talking about your success. And it just kept working. And the diet, the diet was difficult in the beginning. It, it's not that it's, it's all real food, which is great. And, uh, but in the beginning, the hardest thing is trying to get that protein in. If you're not really, you never realize how much protein you need and trying to fit that in and get all those pro, all that protein is, is tough. In the beginning, that was hard. Really yeah, hard. So, so let's talk about that. So now, you know, we give you the plan. We, we outline everything. You get past your first week. So you're looking at this plan. Talk about the ups and downs with the diet. I mean, listen, I know it's not easy. You just mentioned that that was the hardest part, but talk about like your first couple of weeks, like following through. So the first couple of weeks, I mean, you know, in the beginning, everybody's motivated when they start a new diet. So it was, it was okay. But like I said, the protein, the numbers were hard. That's not something I ever was conscious of tracking things like your protein and your carbs. It was more calories or Weight Watcher points or whatever it was. Um, and um, you know, and reading labels. I was never like a label reader. And that's the one thing that one of the things that I've learned, you have to look at what you're eating, the calories, the carbs, the protein, the fat and, and, and track it. And that's also something I never was like diligent with. Even if I said I track stuff, I only would track a few things, not everything. Right. Um, so it was, it was definitely hard and trying to find foods that fit the categories you wanted them to fit. Um, yeah. I mean, like learning food in the beginning too. That's definitely a big thing yeah. too. Like everyone thinks like peanuts and peanut butter. That's all oh, that's protein. Far from that. Right. That's definitely true. And, uh, and things like yogurt. I wouldn't have thought a Chobani yogurt was protein, but it is protein. Yeah. So it is, it, it was hard to start reading all the labels and really, I really figure out what to eat and when to eat it and how to eat it kind of, um, and fit everything in. Uh, 
I still remember I asked you one time, I said, I can't, really can't get the protein in and I, and I don't like Chobani yogurt. I only like Dan and Light and Fit. And uh, you go, okay, so eat two. I'm like, I can't eat two. This is so much food I'm eating. That's the other thing. There was so much food to consume when you're eating not junk food. When you start eating real food and tracking it, it's, I eat so much food every single day. I'm amazed and I'm, I'm never hungry. Yeah, isn't that, isn't that a nice feeling? Yeah, it is a nice feeling. And in the beginning, sometimes at night, I'd be almost crying like, oh, I still got to get some more protein and calories in. I didn't even meet my calories yet. <laughs> like, who ever heard of that? It's so funny. So tell us about like what your family says, because obviously you're doing things totally different now than you've ever done before. So how has that changed your family life? I mean, your husband, your kids, you know, you're, you're a mom too, like you said, and obviously you go from making them whatever they want to eat. And now you're doing this whole different lifestyle. How was that transition for people? For people to hear um well first of all my kids are a little older so they're kind of on their own but sometimes they're home for dinner I, I didn't really change a lot as far as that I mean I prepare my own whatever I'm cooking for them if I don't want to eat I don't want to eat it the way I'm preparing it for them I've just found different ways to prepare say I was going to make them chicken parm and they like it like the full-on old-fashioned chicken parm way well I just learned that I don't have to I can make that in a way that I can eat it too and just not fry the chicken cutlet and put some sauce and, and fat-free uh, mozzarella cheese on top. And it really is just as good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, I mean, they're so happy for me and I really didn't, it really didn't affect their life so much. And most of the stuff I cook for them, I can eat too. I just learned to eat different portions of what it is. Uh, yeah. You know, I would have, maybe I used to have like a small piece of chicken and then I'd have a ton of rice or pasta, whatever I cooked with it. And now I just know have more chicken and just a little bit of the rice and pasta. You can still have everything, just learn to fit it in. Right. Noel, you are like, so I call you our rock star because you are such an inspiration to everybody, everybody in the gym too. Cause I know people, I, I, your ears must ring all day long because clients are always asking me, Noel looks so good. You're like an idol. Like everybody <laughs> like looks to be you because of how just your amount of success in just such a short time has been phenomenal to watch. Like Literally almost every month, you're becoming a new person. It's, it's insane. It really is insane to watch. So I, I think those people want to hear what were your struggles? Like, come on, we all struggle about it. But they think that when someone reaches a certain point that ah, they don't struggle, it was easy for her. Talk oh, about yeah. the struggles. I want to hear all the struggles. Don't worry. Yeah. I, I'll take the okay. trainer hat off. You can, you can <laughs> so, just tell me. <laughs> I'm not gonna yell. So first of all, nobody is more surprised by my transformation than me. I mean, I keep and it's another joke. I always keep telling you, I keep waiting for this to stop working and it keeps working, which is amazing. I mean, I've hit goal after goal. I had never before in my life, I think, hit a weight goal or any goal I set for myself. And now I must have broken six different times I set goals and, and broke them since I've been with you in one year. Um, and I've never had a point where I've uh, went really backwards. I've always just constantly gone down, even though sometimes your weight fluctuates up and down a little, like my progression has always gone down. I haven't had one month where all of a sudden it was like, oh, you had a really bad month and you, you know, you gained two inches and whatever. Um, so that is amazing. Um, so struggles, the biggest, I mean, just recently, I probably had my biggest struggle. I have. I, we won't I'm, talk about that one yet. Cause I yeah, want to talk, okay. that's a whole separate one, but okay. aside from that, before that pre-quarantine okay. time. So Biggest struggles in the beginning, because I did start right around this time of the year. So it was summer. And the biggest struggle in the beginning was, well, one, I like to have my cocktails. So that was learning to fit them in, in moderation is, is a, was a little bit tough in the beginning. And, <laughs> and there's a lot of fails on that side, but, but I've learned a different thing about that. Um, we'll get into just, that too. I'm going to ask you about that one. Yeah. Um, you know, being away on vacation over the summer or going to summer barbecues, there were definitely struggles. Um, or going to parties and weddings. Actually, I think those were my biggest struggles in the beginning, parties and weddings. Because you go in there and it's, you don't have any choice of what you're eating. Uh, it's what's there. And I really didn't, I still struggle with that all along. If it's something that's already prepared, how to count it. If you go to a party and it's, um, you know, I, I don't even know what they serve, but it's chicken francais and or stir fry chicken and vegetables. Like, how do you track it? How do you know how much you're eating? You can't, bring a scale to the wedding. And um, that's definitely a big struggle. Yeah. I mean, I still struggle with that too myself because, you know, you could just say like, all right, this is 500 calories. 
Meanwhile, they could put extra oil, extra butter in there. You'll never know. So you got to always just try to guess. And I always overestimate. So if I'm right. going to a wedding, I just make sure, okay, I know I'm going to have, you know, I'll save a lot of my calories for it and then just pray and hope that I hit it. Sometimes I, I end up the next day I'm, I'm good. And sometimes I end up the next day and I'm over. But that's part of the journey. You're never going to know 100% because you never know how people prepare things. Right. So that's, right. that's a struggle that everybody struggles with. But I think that certain people, what makes you so unique is just like, you're still trying to figure it out. You're still like at it and you, you do it. And just like I said, you know, I have the days where I did good and I had the days where I was, the next day I was up and I was like, oh, I guess I did that day wrong. But you just keep moving on. You right. don't just like, oh, that's right. it. It's over. I gained three pounds from the wedding. I'm done. And then the whole weekend's shot. That, that was new for me too. I was definitely that other person. Had a bed, you know, start out Monday, always gung-ho. And by Friday, you know, came home and whatever, had pizza and a drink and then snacks and whatever. And I was like, ah, forget it. And just blew the whole weekend, spent the whole weekend I don't partying. Think, see, like, this is the thing that blows my mind is that I don't believe that. Like you, you're telling me that I do not believe it because I just see you as this diligent person who just goes out disciplined, like total opposite of what you would have even called yourself. So how, how did that happen? What, I don't, how, how can we, how can we bottle this and sell it to everybody in a while? We'd be I rich. I, I know we would be rich. I, I don't know. I told you, you changed my life. I don't know. You know, walking through your doors changed my life. I say that every time that was the luckiest thing I ever did. I'm I, I it still surprises me. It amazes me. I'm so thankful. Um, because like I said, I, I have tried everything. I have done everything. And I've been that person who yo-yo diets every single week. It's a new thing. It's a new whatever. I try it for two weeks and I'm off it. And then I'm binging. So, um, yeah. So, I yeah. mean, like, like I said, you're, you're phenomenal. You're just the best. Aww, so, so are you. <laughs> so let's talk about the drinking. All right. We all know what your weakness is. We, you know, I knew it going into this, we talked about it, you know, and uh, for a lot of people, listen, the co it's a normal thing. Like you said, you come home on Friday, a couple of drinks, pizza, and then it just overlaps. So how, and, and you drink pretty regularly still, <laughs> right? Like, you yeah, I like to have, yeah, it's, not, yeah. it's not like you don't, you didn't cut it out of your life. You didn't like, oh, I lost 52 pounds, but I'm miserable because I don't drink anymore. No. So That's talk true. about the drinking because like I said, it's a big hurdle for a lot of people. They can't let it go and they can't figure out how to make progress with it. So what did you yeah. do? How, how are you yeah. down 12% body fat and 15 inches off the waist? Still so, drinking a couple of times a week. Yeah. Well, I, I just keep it in my count now. In the beginning, I definitely, you know, it was hard because I, I didn't know if I could just drink one glass of wine or two glasses of wine and be satisfied with that. But I can and I am. And, uh, you know, I did learn other, like other diets where you leave something out. If you take it out of your diet, then you just want it all the time. Um, so I, I really just learned to fit it in. And I decide if it's what I really want that day. Like I honestly could drink wine every single day it would make me very happy to have a glass of wine every day. But I decided that I don't want to do that because drinking wine every day does lead to other things. It does lead me to want to have some pretzels with my wine or just make bad choices. Um, so now I just think about it and on a Friday night or a Saturday night or Friday, Saturday and Sunday night, I decide I want to have wine or a Cosmo or whatever it is I feel like drinking. And I just think about it before I have it. And then I really appreciate it also while I'm drinking it, where I think I was more just the habit of drinking it all the time. I wasn't even appreciating it. So. Well, I actually talked about that the other day. You know, one of the things that we do when we're bored is um, Pavlovian conditioning, it's actually called. So it's basically like you condition yourself. Okay, I'm sitting on the couch. I need wine and I need my pretzels. Like it's almost a condition as you sit mm -hmm. down and you just become so, a habit. So then you got to kind of break that habit and then put something else in its place. And I think that, you know, by tracking everything and getting you on the, you know, the, that seeing the numbers and seeing what certain things are, what protein is, it makes you almost second guess like everything you're doing. And it gives you mm -hmm. a different kind of a structure. Like you said, if you want it, you have it, you just fit it in. Right. And, and tracking uh, is remarkable. Like I said, I never was big on that. And in the beginning, when I said that whole thing where I had to do 100% and you said you have to track your food and, and send your logs in every week. And uh, I mean, you really don't realize what you eat and drink every day until you write down every single thing. And there were days I sent my logs in and there were more calories or more whatever than I should have had. But I, I wrote it all down just to be honest and, and, uh, and it works. That accountability is 
100% what makes me successful. You have to be accountable. Yeah. And I tell people that all the time, you know, how many times I sit down with someone and they're like, you know, oh, I can't lose any weight. I'm only having 900 calories a day. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way. Mm -hmm. And then when you actually sit there with me, you say, okay, what did you eat? And you run through the day and it's like, okay, you're at 3000 calories. Where'd you get 900 from? And it's right. just because no one has any idea. Right. And, and weighing think, good. The, the scale too. I mean, I still, peanut butter is my favorite thing. I mean, I pretty much really have to want peanut butter really bad to have it now because a <laughs> serving of peanut butter is nothing. I know. When you weigh that, it's ridiculous. So you kind of missed this part and we'll get into why you missed it. But um, during the earlier part of the quarantine, we put together the cookbook. Did you get it? I think I did. I'm a okay, little behind so, on all my things. Yeah, you are. You are. Cause I, I will go, we'll get into that. But in there, there's a recipe that someone put up and I was like, wow, this is really good. And you'll love it. So we, they use the PB fit, a scoop of protein powder. You mix a tablespoon of water and mix it up really, really good. It becomes peanut butter consistency and then you can put it on everything, but it's got protein in it and it's got no fat in it because it's the PB like two. Oh. Yeah. Check out the cookbook. It's in there. All right. I'm going to check it out. But it was, it, it was really, really good. So Let's get into that because everyone's kind of like, what is he talking about? What happened? So, so now we're here, we're working really hard in the gym. I'm going to fast forward to pre-quarantine time and we get this, you know, this, this virus starts coming around or whatever. And everybody starts talking about this virus, this virus. And literally one day in the news, they're like, okay, everything's got to shut down. And I'm like, shut down. I'm like, what do you mean shut down? What is this? I didn't, we still didn't even know what was going on. So now, in my mind, I'm like, oh, this is going to be really bad because I know like, like people, and I worried about this so much, like people in your shoes who are on the ball, they're rolling, you know, one huge hiccup like this, because again, we, don't, we didn't know how long we were going to be closed at that point. We still don't even know. But, uh, um, you know, it could set someone back in the total opposite direction. And I'm like, I was getting so nervous. I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be bad. I'm like, everybody who's made progress is just going to, that's it. That, you know, because it's so easy to go back to revert to your old ways, especially mm -hmm. when you're stressed. Very easy. Mm -hmm. But not only did you come, I mean, we're not done with the quarantine yet, but not only have you come out of this quarantine, your lowest weight since before you got married, right? Right. So yep. you lost more yep. weight in it. You had something tragic happen to you and you still came out of it. I'm like, I'm so, I'm always so proud of you, but I want to tell everybody kind of what happened and how you got through that and how you managed to, to still stay the course, because a lot of people forget and think that, Oh, they see your, your transformation picture. And they're like, Oh, she lost 52 pounds. It was easy. There was no hiccups, but this was a, a huge hiccup in your life. And this is how I know that your results are going to permanently stay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's kind of hard to talk about, but, um, yeah. Well, when the quarantine first started, let me put, start with that. When the quarantine first started, I was so focused. I was not going to let anything get to me. And I had a whole plan. I started, I was also, you know, I had to start working from home. So I decided I was going to pretend like I was still doing everything out of the house. I would prepare all my food the night before and get all ready for work. And even though I was working at home, it was, and it was going great. I mean, I was really focused, focused. Um, and then unfortunately, um, um, my parents live with me and my mom had taken a fall and, and wound up breaking her hip and um, she was not well to begin with and she had to be hospitalized and unfortunately she had complications and um, she passed away. So it's been, uh, you know, really a rough quarantine. It's been, it was unexpected and, you know, we're all dealing with the grief of that and, um, you know, trying to, move on with our lives as we can and, and um, just take care of the family and all that stuff. Um, so during that time though, I, there were definitely a lot of hiccups with my, with my diet and my exercise. I, while my mom was in the hospital, there was a lot of interruptions. And even though we couldn't see her, there was tons of phone calls and things like that. And uh, so it was, it was definitely rough. During the first part of that period, I, lost an exorbitant amount of weight because there was so much stress and I wasn't eating or anything. But um, after my mom passed away, I think because people don't know what else to do, they keep sending you food and food and food and food. That was their answer. So we were constantly having food deliveries in the house and it was not diet friendly food. Um, but 
you know, it was what was there. So you start eating it and talk about reverting to your ways. It's comfort food. It was all comfort food. And we're all sitting together and being sad and we can't be with family and friends. It's just the immediate family because nobody can be together. Um, so what do you do with family and friends? You just eat and drink. And I did a little bit of that. And I did gain back some weight and I was not feeling so good. And it took me a while to, to a couple, you know, a week or two to finally realize I have to start getting myself back on track because I could revert totally back to my old ways. Um, so luckily I did. And uh, I, I got myself back on track, but it wasn't easy this time. This, is the first, this was the first time I really had a hard time getting back on track. And rightfully so. I mean, your whole world is upside down at this point. Yeah. You don't know, you know, it's, it's, it's never easy to lose a loved one, especially a parent. So, you know, I, I always say that you're my rock star. I always tip my hat to you, but like, I think I, you really topped the cake this time because like I said, it's so easy to revert and we're talking about, you know, fitness and whatever, but the fact of the matter is health is the most important part of this. And that's kind of what we always overlook that part of it. And, mm -hmm. you know, the simple fact of the matter is that you're in a much better place now than you ever were before. And I think it's good that people hear this because we're all human. We're all going to have those times where it's just like, it's never convenient to do it. But the fact is, is that you pick yourself up and you keep moving. Right. You know, you just and that's, keep moving right. forward. Right. And I had told you at one point that my mom was really an inspiration for me to do this because my mom was never into fitness and always struggled with her weight and was not the healthiest person and you know it led to a big decline in her and and when i first started with you i said she was one of my biggest motivations because i can't i don't want to let myself get to that point um so i i do this every day for her now too i i know she was so proud of me and she wanted me to get stronger and she didn't want me to have her struggles and um so it's it's huge it's a huge motivating factor to to keep that up well she's very proud of you i know that i could say yeah. that with with the utmost certainty because I'm so proud of you and everybody else is so proud of you. You know, and like I said, just the simple fact that you've come out of this at the leanest you've ever been when it could have easily went the other direction, just, just goes to show you that this has become a lifestyle for you and that this is something that's going to continue long term. And I just, like I said, I'm so proud of you. I, I can't keep saying that because I'm just so proud of you. I can't stop Thank saying you. it because I Thank am. You. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> like you said, someone who tried to, proved me wrong the whole time. And I just, you know, I'm just, like I said, I'm just so proud of you. It's just everything from the, the work in the gym to your family life, to just fitting everything in to like the crises that we all go through. Like you're a rock star, 100%. So Noel, what advice would you give someone just starting out? So let's say someone's listening to this, they're in your shoes. I'm not going to say your age, but you can. Um, <laughs> what would you say to someone starting out and listening to this right now? What would you say? Uh, um, okay, so I'm going to be 53 next month. Well, in July. So um, I would say don't let don't let that deter you thinking you're too old to start something or or past your prime or, or you wouldn't be able to do that. Um, first of all, don't be afraid. Just give it a give it a try. You would be amazed. Um, What other advice would I give? I'm like losing my train of thought. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> no, you're doing, you're the, doing fine. I know you're nervous. The, you're fine. <laughs> the, the, uh, I would say the biggest thing is just be truthful with yourself and be accountable. And you have to really want it for you, not for anybody else. You have to find, I think you said this one time in one of your things, you have to find your why. And that why has to be stronger than your what. Like, why do you want to do this? as opposed to what are you going to eat and what pleasure are you going to get out of that? Like you have to find your really, and for me, that is, of course it was the obvious. I wanted to look and feel better and be more comfortable in myself. But the bigger why is I don't want to spend the rest of my life being miserable because I can't do things or everything hurts and my mom. So, you know, that why is really strong for me now, which is what keeps me focused. So you really have to think about it. You can't just do it because you think you want to look good in a bathing suit or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's not going to so sustain right. you. Right. right. Which, Agreed. which was a biggie. Um, yeah. And just be accountable, like really, really be truthful with yourself if you really want to do it and just be truthful with, you know, if you're going to eat something, write it down and just know that you ate it and, and fess up to it. Yeah. I know you're lying to yourself. 
You're only lying to yourself. That was another thing I learned. I'm only like, it doesn't matter. I would go back to whatever the diet doctor, whoever, and be like, no, I, I didn't eat that. But yes, I did. So yeah. they don't really care. It, it, it's all on you. It's what you want. So do it for you. Um, so, uh, and I have one more follow-up question to that. So okay. for everybody who followed your success and they want to be Noel, I want to be like Noel. Like remember those old commercials? I want to be like Mike, like Michael Jordan. I want to be like Mike. I want to be like Noel. What would, what tip would you give them to make their journey easier? Um, never say you can't have something. It's another thing I learned from you. Never say you can't have it because then you just want it, want it, want it. So if you, if you really want it, just learn to fit it in um, and just do what makes you happy. Like if we, you know, of course, everybody should come to your gym because it's the best thing in the world. <laughs> and I will attest to that. But if it's not your thing, you have to find something that makes you happy and makes you want to do it all the time because then you're going to be successful. Right. Um, and just keep going. Don't give up. Don't, if you have a bad day, that's another thing. Just, just the next day, wake up and be like, okay, it's a new day. My, my motto always now is I can't go backwards. I'm just going to go forwards. I can't, I can't do anything about what happened in the past. I am just going to take from today on and move forward. Right. Um, yeah. That's, that's my biggest, that's actually probably my biggest tip. You can't go backwards. So just start from today and move on and don't Love wait. It. Like if it's whatever time it is right now, if you decide right now is it, just make your plan and start it right now. Don't wait till Monday morning. Why? Yeah. Take action. Yeah. Take action. Take action. That's, action. The, that's the key. Yeah. No, well, listen, thank you so much for coming on. I really, really appreciate it. This was awesome. I've been looking forward to getting you on this for so long. And then despite everything that happened, I'm again, I'm so, 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 so super blessed to have you in my life also, because your progress. And when I hear the things that you've told me, the stories and just like, it, it really makes me feel so blessed and honored that I've had the opportunity to be part of that journey. And it's why I do what I do. It's why I've gotten into what I do. I always wanted to see people better themselves and uh, in a better way and like a more positive light. And you just fulfill that for me. So thank you so much for everything that you do. Thank you for being the rock star that you are and will mm -hmm. continue to be. And I can't wait to do this again with you when mm -hmm. you're, I don't want to say another 50 pounds down because then you'd really be invisible. But you know, <laughs> when, when there's the, the second part of the transformation. Well, I have to thank you too. Cause like I said, you've changed my life. You are the most amazing. I don't know anybody who loves what they do as much as you and is as knowledgeable and is as real and cares so much about everybody. Every single person who walks through your door and probably every single person you meet in your life, you are like that. You are just such a special person. It honestly, I, 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 I say it all the time. I'm thankful that I walked through that door, not only for the transformation, just for meeting you. You're just, you're amazing. Unbelievable. Amazing. Thank you. And guys, I only had a pair of a little bit of money to say that. So we're good. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, Noel. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye.